All right, hello everybody. Okay, uh, let me just start by saying uh, this is your final class with me uh, for the year. So it's really anticlimactic. I realize I, that actually just hit me literally as I hit record on this. Um, so I'm sorry that it ends this way. I'm sorry that we didn't get to finish out the year uh, in class and with your big justice projects. Partially sorry for that. It's a lot of work too, but um, but I am sorry that we missed the last two plus months of um, getting to see each other face to face, and um, I don't know, just kind of ride the end of the year out. So, all right. That said, I think this is a really really exciting uh, section. So I'm excited for it. Let's start with a prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you personally for the chance to teach this junior class all year and uh, for the blessing that they have been to me, and I hope that this has been a fruitful year for them as well. So please take everything that I have tried to teach and uh, use that for their own good, their own spiritual benefit, and guide them as they head into summer and into their senior years, and use this hopefully as a launching pad. It's going to affect the rest of their lives. So be at work in them. Pour out your spirit upon all of us. Help us to grow nearer to you through prayer and study. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, chapter six, right? This is a relatively short section, overarching theme, development technology, but it's a big one. It's fantastic. All right, start with this quote. Our freedom is profoundly shaped by our being and by its limits. No one shapes his own conscience arbitrarily, but we all build our own I on the basis of a self which is given to us. I'll explain this. Not only are other persons outside our control, but each one of us is outside his or her own control. A person's development is compromised if he claims to be solely responsible for produ producing what he becomes. By analogy, the development of peoples goes awry if humanity thinks it can recreate itself through the wonders of technology. Okay, this is so rich. There's so much in here. No one shapes his own conscience arbitrarily. Your conscience is that inner voice, you know, telling you, yes, this is good. No, this is bad. Do this. Don't do that. Right? The aboriginal vicar of Christ, the messenger of Christ that's kind of written into our own human natures. Uh, we don't shape that ourselves. Okay. But we build our I, our uh, personalities, our individual um, personal development that happens, it's all built on a self that we receive. Remember that whole section earlier in the document, he talks about gratuitousness, the giftness of our own being. We receive our own being. I don't determine my genetic makeup, my, my parents, my uh, underlying health conditions, my culture, right? I'm not, I didn't choose to be an American. Uh, I didn't choose to be a man. I didn't choose any of those things. Those are all determined for me ahead of time. I had to receive that self, and then my personality and who I am, my identity, then develops in part due to my own choices, but in in maybe even larger part than that, due to factors that I have no control over. Okay, like my parents, my, my environment, my culture, uh, my safety, my health. Okay, all of those things contribute to the development of who I am as a person. Okay, so that's why it says not only are other persons outside our control, I can't control what you do, but each one of us, I'm outside of my own control in a sense because I received who I am to a large degree, and I can only choose and determine my identity and who I am so much. Okay, so a person's development is compromised if he claims to be responsible by himself of producing what he becomes. He's just living in a, a lie, he's deceiving himself. Um, and he says, by analogy, then, the development of peoples, entire peoples, uh, that doesn't work if we think that we can recreate ourselves through technology. All right, so that lays the, uh, sets the stage, you could say. He starts by talking about what is human freedom? I think you talked about this a bit last year. I tried to talk about this, I think, at the beginning of the semester. Freedom, all right, the development of the individual is shaped in part, excuse me, by our free and responsible choices, okay? So our choices make us more or less human depending on whether they're good or evil. 
right? We talked about this with the natural law. So the natural law should be running through your head a little bit here. Uh, we become more or less human depending on whether our choices are good or evil, right? The good refers to things that are objectively fulfilling for us as human persons, okay? So life, uh, reproduction contributes contributes to that. Seeking God, um, all those fundamental human goods, okay? Friendship, all those things. They actually fulfill our human nature. That's why they're good. So our freedom then is limited by our nature. It's shaped by what we are, the type of being that we are, okay? So human freedom, it's a freedom to pursue the good, okay? To become what we're meant to be. But what is good for us is already determined for us by our nature, okay? We don't decide what's good and what's evil. I can't just decide, you know what? Suddenly I think that cutting off my arm is a good thing. Cutting off my arm is, is now good for me as a human person. Well, no, it's just not. That's objectively speaking, that's not going to work. You can use physical examples like this. I, I think it's actually better for me as a person if I don't have a heart. So I'm just going to tear my heart out of my chest. Okay. Sorry, no matter what you do, that's not going to help you as a person. That's just going to kill you. Spiritually, there are things uh, like that as well, right? We talk about the category of mortal sin just freely choosing to do something that is gravely wrong. It's contrary to human nature, okay? Like murdering somebody is never going to be good for me, let alone the person I'm killing, okay? So we can't just determine what's good or evil because we're not our own creators, okay? So he says an individual who thinks he's his own creator actually impedes his own development. And he uses this term Promethean presumption. Now, you Latin people are going to know who Prometheus is, all right? Uh, Greek mythological figure, a titan, I believe, um, who was uh, in the in mythology understood to be the creator of the human race, okay? So if we this have a Promethean attitude, that means that we are presuming to be our own creators, our own masters of the human race, okay? So anybody who does that, you're actually impeding your own development because... Uh, you're not actually pursuing what's good, okay? You're, you're out of touch with reality, okay? No truth to it. So the development of peoples fails if we think we can recreate ourselves through technology. No matter how technologically advanced we are, we can't actually change what we are as human beings made in the image and likeness of God, okay? Okay, so therefore, individual development and the development of peoples has to be in accordance with the natural law because all that's saying is it has to line up with how we're made, the things that are objectively good for us, okay? We can't develop in a way that's actually going to destroy basic human goods. That wouldn't be development at all. All right. Technology as a tool of personal freedom. So what is technology? He gets into this a little bit. Well, technology is an expression of human freedom and autonomy. Autonomy, independence, right, self um, governance, which allows us to exercise dominion over matter, reduce risk, save labor, improve quality of life, all those things, right? But it's an expression of human freedom and autonomy. Uh, he says it reveals humanity's drive towards development, and it's a response to God's command to till and keep the land, right? We've been given this responsible stewardship over the world, over creation. Technology is an expression of that, okay? We develop technology so we can better exercise dominion over creation. At least that's what it should be used for. It says technology is the objective element of human action. So remember the objective and subjective elements or aspects of human work. The objective aspect is what the work produces, but also the tools that go into making it. That's technology. But the, the objective element exists for the sake of the subjective element, which is the person who's actually doing it, right? We talked about that uh, previously. So we have to keep that in mind. Our use of technology has to be limited to what's the good of the human, authentic good of the human person. Okay. So technology is still bound by the natural law. All right. Which means we can't allow ourselves to be tempted by the power that technology offers as if true freedom meant having the ability to do what used to be impossible. All right. So here's another, an alternative understanding of freedom that's faulty. This idea that freedom is being able to do whatever I want, whenever I want to do it. 
And technology is what allows me to do what was previously impossible, like flying, right? So if freedom is being able to do whatever I want to do, whenever I want to do it, and I want to fly, then I'm not free unless I can fly. Well, technology, the invention of the airplane, now gives me that freedom, okay? So on that view, technology is just pure limitless freedom. Like, I want to do this, I just need to make the right machine and I'll be able to do it, then I'll be free to do it, okay? That's a faulty sense of freedom. And he calls this a, tech, a technical mindset that all we need to do is develop the right technology to do what we want, okay? And that's really the end goal, all right? So he says, in reality, no, that technical mindset is a problem. Technology doesn't actually make us more free just because it removes some human limitations, like making us able to fly. True freedom remains bound to, tr to what is truly good, because true freedom remains uh, the freedom to become a, uh, the person I was meant to be, okay, to pursue the good. All right, so he calls for formation in the ethically responsible use of technology. All right, that's extremely important. Technology for technology's sake is very dangerous. So he gets into various dangers of a technical mindset. I'll try not to dwell too much on this because we can't think of development as simply a matter of uh, financial engineering. Like we just need to develop the right economic realities here, the right economic financial institutions and uh, technology and things like that. Okay. Improving economic production and stability are important, but by themselves, they are really just a means to an end, okay? So he says the technical mindset tends to confuse the ends with the means, all right? The, the end goal with the way that we reach that goal, all right? So profit, consolidating political power, uh, scientific discoveries, those are tools to be used for achieving integral human development, okay? Those things don't, those are not development in and of themselves. You can't just say, boom, I made much bigger profit, that's development in and of itself. No, that profit then needs to be used to actually further human development, the development of the whole person, making us into more human, human beings, okay? All right, that's kind of the underlying theme of the whole document, right? Peace building that requires more than just international diplomacy, economic, uh, technological, cultural exchanges. You have to have the involvement of the peoples affected, the cooperation on a grassroots level. Talked about that last section, uh, chapter five. Then he gets into the means of social communication. Social media, okay, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok would be in there, okay, TV, podcasts, YouTube, all of these things. They're not neutral, he says. In fact, he says the people who say these are that social media or the means of social communication are neutral are usually trying to cover up an agenda, okay? All right, he says the media has a, quote, fundamental importance in engineering changes in attitude towards reality and the human person, end quote. All right, so the media is used oftentimes for engineering changes in attitude towards reality. In other words, changing the way you think, okay? So, Media does that. Now think about Facebook and the censorship that happens there. YouTube cens censors certain things. So um, if there are views that are expressed in a video or an advertisement that are contrary to what Facebook or YouTube thinks is good and appropriate, they will censor that. They will exclude that. Okay. Um, likewise, the way that information is presented to you Okay, is there a positive spin or a negative spin? Okay, how is it presented? That is all designed to shape the way that you think about the realities that they're talking about. Okay, what's an example? Well, political, like political ads are kind of an extreme example of this, okay? But there's a lot more subtle stuff in the way a news article is written, perhaps. The language that they use can affect the way that you think about the events that they're reporting. Was this a good event? Was this a bad event? Okay. So you've got to be very careful about bias, all right? Okay, so he says we need to use the means of social communication very carefully by ensuring that they're directed toward a vision of the human person and the common good that reflects universal values, all right? Um, okay, think about movies and TV shows. As you're watching stuff, be like, well, like what are the signals that this 
uh, show or movie or whatever form of media is communicating to me. All right, you just gotta be mindful of that. Sorry for the rant there, but I thought that jumped out of me when I watched the show and I, I just wanted to share that as a, an example of that. Okay. <clears throat>